What's up guys? Today we're coming at you with a Monarch deck profile. So let's jump into the deck profile. Let's see what we're coming at you with. To add a fun aspect into the deck, we're running one the Wickedy Avatar, one the Wicked Dreadroot, and one the Wickedy Racer. These cards are not mandatory for the deck, but they're very, very fun to get out and pull off on your opponent. And usually when you get them off, usually gonna be declaring game. The Wickedy Racer pretty much just when it's normal summon, he activates his effect, makes it so that your opponent can't activate spells and traps to the end of their second end phase. Also on top of that, he becomes the highest attack is the highest attack monster on the field, plus 100. The Wicked Dread Root allows you to just be able to do just like fear all over your board. Anything that's under his ATK is gonna be cut in half, so nothing really matches his attack points. And the Wicked Eraser pretty much wants to clear away all the fields, so if your opponent does decide to Solemn Strike this or Solemn Warning it, you're still gonna get the effect to wipe the board. And he ends up becoming 1000 ATK for every card on your opponent's side of the field, so it, it, it keeps your opponent in balance and check. We're running three of the Underworld Monarch. This guy, just to be able to make sure that your opponent just spin back that unnecessary card, keep throwing your opponent off their game. The main thing that you want to do is make sure you get your trap in the graveyard in order to make your prime mark into the graveyard and your escalation of the monarch into the graveyard so you can get your plays going and also throw your opponent back as well. We're running one of the Heavenly Monarch just to be able to get that extra monarch in your hand. It's a tribute on your opponent's turn. Very, very good. We're running one Thessalos, Thessalos, just to be able to get that good confiscation feel, just to be able to make sure you can see what your opponent has, get good insight into the game, and hopefully minus your opponent on top of that. We're running one Caius the Mega Monarch. Caius the Mega Monarch, just, you know, tribute off a of dark, hit two cards, just to be able to get that good field clearance. And if you hit a dark on their side of the field, if there's an extra dark in their graveyard deck, extra deck, banish it on out with it. We're running three Caius the Shadow Monarch just to be able to get that spot removal. Just make sure there's a card on your opponent's side of the field, you're gonna have to banish him out. But all in all, if you hit a dark monster, deal a thousand damage. We're also running two Vanity's Fiend just to be able to put lock on the game sometimes. Sometimes your opponent wants a special summon too much. Throw this out there with a Monarch Stormforth or with a March of the Monarchs. That could pretty, pretty much lock the game down for you. We're running three of the Heavenly Squire. This helps you get your pantheism back. Helps you get into a lot of your plays that you need. Get your other Squire out there so you can get your tribute summons off. Helps you get a lot of plays going. We're running two of the three of the Underworld Squire. Underworld Squire helps you get that extra normal summon. Also on top of that, to banish it out of the graveyard, help you get a special summon of a squire out of the graveyard. So that helps you out with a lot of your plays and helps you get your double normal summons that you want. We're running two of the Thunder Vassal Monarch. This girl just helps you to be able to get a free special summon to help you get to your monsters on the board as soon as possible. This can help you to have her out there and also use Monarch Storm Fort, tribute off monster off that troop, that token off your opponent's side of the field and her, going with your place from there. And that is it for our monsters. For our spell cards, we're running two domain. We're only gonna wanna run two domain because if you get one out, usually you're usually gonna put it on lock after that. But just to be able to have, as long as you got a tribute summon monster on your side of the field, your opponent can't use their extra deck. That's a very good advantage for you. We're running one Monarch Stone Fork because it's only at one, but the thing about it is it doesn't target and it helps you get your monster, uh, big monsters off your opponent's side of the field. We're running one March of the Monarchs. March of the Monarchs just helps it so that your monarchs are not targeted. And if you do tribute off one of these wickets with this, it's a very good way to help keep it on board because they are not like the Egyptian God cards where they can't be targeting things like that, but that helps this effect out a lot. We're running two, Return of the Monarch. The reason why I like this card so much is if you, as you build your chain, if you build this so this is the last thing in chain, your opponent can't chain to strike your Monarchs and effects like that. 
So that can help you out a lot in order to get advantage and also to be able to plus over other card effects. So I like that a lot. We're running three. Tenacity of the Monarch. Tenacity just to be able to search out our Monarch spells and traps cards, reveal the Monarch, and then just be able to go off your place from there. We're running one Pantheism of the Monarch just to be able to get that good draw. Hopefully you recycle this as much as you can, that way you can keep your drawing going. You want to get this card in your hand as fast as possible because center is only at one. So if you get it in there, get it in the graveyard, find a way to get it back, that's the best way to go about it. To help with the loss of Pantheism to one, we're running three Allure Darkness. We're running plenty, plenty of darks in the deck. The main thing to me is, you know, a lot of people say, why you run the Wickeds? Well, if I can't get a Wicked out, I can all easily banish it. It's a dark, it's a dark, so I can easily say Allure. If I don't see a way to get it out fast, go ahead and banish it out. Go on with the other place you need to get on with. We're running one. Reinforcement of the army just to be able to get to our heavenly uh, squire, just to be able to get our plays going. We're running one, one for one, once again, to get to that heavenly squire as soon as possible. We're running one foolish burial to help get that underworld monarch into the graveyard and start getting pluses from that. I'm also running two fires of doomsday. Sometimes you don't have the squires in hand that you need. This is just a way to have chunk blocks and also to help get out monarchs or any other monsters that you need to get out. This can help you get just extra little advantage on board. And that is it for our spell cards. For our trap cards, we're running three. The prime monarch, this just helps you just to be able to save your life so many times. Your opponent is going to want to try to OTK and this right here can just sneak out so many times and your opponent's just has to slowly eat away at as you start building back advantage off of it. But that is it for the deck profile, guys. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know what you think. We're out.